Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Regroup Show. My name is LJ Walker. I'm a real estate investor helping you realize your dreams of owning a home or investing in one. Well, today I'd like to share with you my current situation. As many of you know, I've mentioned this to you before, but my mom, my uncle and I, we have a property in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My uncle is the one that actually lives in the property. Now, unfortunately, he got into an accident and then afterwards he got real sick. A cousin of mine who lives nearby recommended that we sell the house because he is not physically or mentally capable of living there anymore. His friends also said to us that he may have to go into a nursing home. Before all of this happened, COVID took away some of the work. See, he's a freelance landscaper and one of the companies that he worked for, they went out of business. So things really aren't real, uh, looking all that great for him, as a matter of fact. And this is why we were thinking, you know what, let's not move forward with refinancing at this point. It may be best for us to sell. Well, one of the things that was told to us was that Medicaid may come after the house in order to pay for his long-term care. However, I did a little digging and I found out that a primary residence is exempt from an asset when it comes to Medicaid, particularly homes that are less than 595,000 in some states and 893,000 in other states. And our house definitely is less than that. As far as another relative moving in the house to take care of it, that's pretty much out of the question. I am not willing to leave where I am at to move into that house down there in Florida. And even my other relatives that are there, they're not interested in doing so either. All right. So that's, that's why that's canceled. The next thing is I called my lawyer and they said that typically if if there is a mental situation going on that all three of our names may not necessarily be needed in order to sell. However, it was strongly recommended that a power of attorney be signed just in case before all of his mental capacities are gone, basically. And this way, it'll be a whole lot easier to sell without his name on it. The next thing is, is um, and this is something that I have to go over. Unfortunately, he has the paperwork, but it says to make sure we have joint owned with right of survivorship so that in case he dies or anything like that, it avoids the home going into any sort of probate process. And in addition, the Medicaid estate recovery will not be able to put a lien on the home. All right. So what are our options as far as taking care of him is concerned? There is something called a Medicaid DCD PAP program where I don't believe that a relative or a friend has to live with him, but they have to basically monitor him and make sure he's okay, a sort of like a home caregiver, all right? And there are also agencies that provide that as well. Some of you 
may say to yourself, you know, why not try and keep the home anyway? I mean, the good points about the home is that it is in good, is in walking distance to a lot of entertainment and it is one hour from the beaches. However, there are other obstacles. It is a multifamily. There is a tenant there. The yard that is there with the house contains a whole lot of fruits and vegetables. You see, it's one thing to fix up the house, but it's another thing to maintain the land, especially when the land has so much vegetation on it. My uncle, he's a real Jamaican Rastafarian vegetarian. He's got mango trees, apple trees, orange trees. He's growing aloe. He's growing okra, beans, potatoes, everything you can think of. He's got it. You understand? So, you know, trying to find somebody that will do that, take care of him, the house and the property that's a bit much. And the tenant that we have down there is not paying enough for us to take on management and also, you know, finding a gardener. All right. So that's one of the issues. And then the last challenge I feel, and one of the biggest challenges is that he has a pit bull dog. Many nursing homes do not allow pets, and a few of them that do, they have limits as far as what type of pet and also the size of pet that is allowed. This particular dog doesn't really like anybody to a certain extent, except for my uncle, and I, he must have some sort of affinity to the tenants as well but the tenants to be honest they got a separate entrance so the dog really does not have to go there's a gate and the dog really doesn't have to go where the tenants are anyway needless to say uh nobody that's another reason why um it's hard for any family member or friend to want to take on that particular responsibility and I would say that this is the biggest challenge of, as of all because, you know, separating a man from his dog is, is really hard, you know. Animal control and ASPCA, they definitely would do the job. It's just that there's a whole lot of emotion that's going to be involved. <laughs> all right, so... That's what I basically want to share with you guys. I know that I've seen where some people have tried to contact me outside of YouTube. And some of you may have may think about doing so. I'm going to let you know that as of this moment, it is a bit trying. Um, of course, you know, there are many solutions that we're looking into um, that we've already considered. Again, it's the emotions that are tied to it because this house is not just a house. It's a home and his dog is not just a dog. His dog is a friend, if you will. So my friends, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to share with you guys. If you have any comments, uh, suggestions i'm open to hearing about that while we work on this situation all right guys that's all good night